Hello and welcome to another episode on the biological processes. Today we're going to talk about the powerhouse known as ATP. If you haven't already done so, go down to the link and click on the link. It will give you a handout that goes along with this that will help you to follow along as I talk about ATP. I strongly suggest looking at that while the video is going on. ATP has a couple things in it. The first thing it has is adenosine. Adenosine acts as the head of ATP. Attached to it is a three-legged tail, so to speak, of P. There are three P's, and the P's stand for phosphates. Just like a tricycle has three wheels, three phosphates are called a triphosphate. So the full name of ATP is adenosine triphosphate because there are three phosphates attached to an adenosine. ATP, like we said, is the powerhouse. It's, it's, it makes all the energy for your cells, gives you energy, helps things grow. And so it's important to understand that the little P's on the adenosine, you can think of them as money, all right? As you use them up, you spend energy. ATP is like a full wallet of money because it has lots and lots of energy. Once you've used up that energy, it turns into a DP or adenosine diphosphate. Just like tri means two, di, D-I, means two. ADP is like an empty wallet because you've used up the one phosphate and it needs to be replaced to be powerful again like ATP. In other words, there is less energy in adenosine diphosphate than there is in adenosine triphosphate. In order to get that energy back, you need to rebuild that phosphate, and the only way to do that is by eating things like proteins, carbohydrates, and lipids to help rebuild the ATP. So how does ATP work with humans? Well, first of all, you go to your favorite fast food restaurant, you go home and have a nice mother's cooking, whatever it is that you do, and then your digestive system breaks down the food. Your body goes through a process to create the ATP, then your body uses one of those ATP, one of those P's in the phosphate group for energy. The ATP becomes a DP by burning off one of those P's as energy, and energy is later added back in when you eat more food, and ADP becomes ATP once again, and it comes back like a long lost friend. Still to come in future episodes, how do we make this ATP? It's quite a complicated process, which I'm sure you are all very interested to learn about. We'll talk about it soon with photosynthesis and cellular respiration. Thank you, and please come again.